Okay, hello again. Uh, welcome to the third lecture. This lecture, uh, the theoretical part, uh, to begin with, will be quite short. I don't have too much to say on the theory before we start looking at the exercises, so I'll just do a quick introduction here, and then the longer part will be actually looking at the exercises. The exercises that we're going to look at in this uh, lecture are connected with adjectives. So we talked a little bit about nouns last time. Uh, it'll be better to talk about verbs once we've talked a little about sentence structure because, uh, well, you'll see when we get there. Um, and we will say a little more about adverbs later on, uh, but also that that will be easier when we've looked at a little bit of, of sentence structure. So we're going to look at four, I think we've got four different exercises. There are four different things that we're going to be talking about today. So I'll just say a little bit about each before we actually look at the examples. Okay, so the first uh, exercise that we're going to look at will be simply telling the difference between adjectives and adverbs. I, I talked a little bit about this last time, how some uh, adjectives and adverbs look the same, how there are some adjectives that end with ly. Um, and there are some examples, which we'll see, where a sentence could actually be understood in two different ways, depending on whether we understand as an adjective or an adverb a particular word. Okay, so sometimes we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, then we're going to look at a, a series of different types of phrases. Um, so ways of, of changing what's been written, ways of rewriting, okay, so replacing. Uh, so there are certain uh, clauses. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, uh, examples of relative clauses, which can be rewritten more simply by using an adjective phrase. And of course, what, one of the uh, important parts of, of having good style, good skill with language, is being able to phrase things differently. And generally speaking, in English, it's considered good style to be able to phrase things uh, in as few words as possible, okay, um, to keep sentences short and to the point. So, Good style in English is not about being able to use complicated structures or complicated vocabulary. It's, being about, it's about being able to use the right structure and the right vocabulary. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure what, what you think about this, but I have the impression that for some people, at least in Polish writing, uh, good style is associated with very complicated, long explanations, um, and, and uh, the idea that you should do everything as quickly and simply as you can is, is, not really, uh, is not really encouraged. But in English writing, uh, good writing is short, simple, clear writing. Of course, when you're writing about something complicated, your writing may be very complex, very sophisticated, but you shouldn't be using phrases, you shouldn't be using structures just because they are complicated, you should always be trying to find the simplest, okay? So that's partly what we're going to be doing with these exercises. So replacing relative clauses with adjectives uh, is a way of shortening sentences and reducing the number of clauses, okay? So by clauses we're talking about parts of a sentence, so we, we haven't got into the structure of sentences, we'll talk about that next time, we're talking about parts of a sentence which usually, usually have their own verb, okay? Uh, but we're also going to talk a bit about verbless clauses today. But usually they would be separated because they have their own verb. And very often when that verb is the verb to be, which is uh, what we will see with, with the relative clauses, then we want to get rid of that. Because the verb to be is a meaningless verb, okay? This is something I'm always repeating to students, that the verb to be doesn't mean anything, right? It's the first verb that you learn in any new language, but it's meaningless. If you don't use it, it doesn't change at all uh, the meaning of your sentences. Uh, you simply say, you know, I Martin instead of I am Martin. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything, really. It just sounds ungrammatical because we're used to it. But generally speaking, the verb to be doesn't add any extra information. Uh, so it can be missed out, and it very often is missed out, and we'll see some examples of how we can do that. Okay, the second set of, uh, set of exercises, or second set of uh, examples, is about using an adjective as the head 
of a noun phrase. Okay, so I just need to explain what we mean by the head of a phrase. So the head word in any phrase, right, a phrase is made up of a number of words, but the head word is the word which makes that phrase what it is, right? So in a noun phrase, the head word is a noun, okay? So when we say the foolish man, okay, we have a determiner, we have an adjective, we have a noun, but this is a noun phrase overall, right? Overall, it's going to work as a noun. So the head of that phrase would be the word man, okay? So in any type of phrase, the head is the key word which makes that phrase the type of phrase that it is, right? So we very often use adjectives in noun phrases. However, it's also possible to turn adjectives into temporary nouns, okay, uh, and use an adjective as though it were a noun, usually with a determiner, okay, so the fact that there's a determiner there shows you that it is being used as a noun, although it is a word which is usually an adjective. Some of these examples are very, very common, but there are some special features about how they're used, so that's what we look at in the third exercise. Okay. The fourth exercise is about verbless adjective clauses. So, as I said, normally a clause we, we can recognize because it has some type of verb in it, in, in a standard clause. Uh, however, uh, it's possible to have verbless clauses, but these clauses are always somehow separate from the rest of the sentence. It's because there's another clause, which is the main clause in the sentence. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the next couple of lectures. But it is possible uh, to create structures where uh, we have an adjective clause, which, again, usually is removing the verb to be. Right? So we're removing the verb to be, and that leaves us with just the adjective clause, which we understand okay, to be... We understand the, 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 uh, the, the grammar of the original with the to be, but we don't need to say it. And again, these types of clauses are very, very much considered good style in English, okay? Whether or not you feel confident enough to use them in your own English is a separate question, okay? That's up to you. You certainly should recognize them in other people's English. Um, but as I said, the point is that it's considered good English to use such phrases to pack in more information to the same number of words. Okay, that's, uh, that's the kind of style that we're looking for. Okay, as I said, this is going to be the last, um, yeah, so, so this is kind of the last, where we're talking about the parts of speech, okay. Um, in the next uh, lecture theory part, I'll talk about the structure of sentences, okay, and the different parts of a sentence. So these are not parts of speech. We're not giving uh, particular words a name, like a part of speech. We'll be looking at the function which particular words and phrases are playing in a sentence. Okay, so that's what we'll come on to next. So if anybody has any questions about parts of speech as individual words, they should send them in now. Uh, and I'll come back to that in the next lecture. Uh, but if you don't tell me, uh, then I won't know what you have problems with because I can't see you. I can't see you shaking your heads and thinking I don't understand that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to finish now. So this is going to be a fairly short one, uh, and then we'll move on to just you'll be able to see the screen of the exercises instead of me, which will probably be nicer for you. Uh, and that'll take us a little while to go through. So the next one will be a little bit longer, just just with that with that screen. Okay. All right, so that's it for now.